So we've had the Behringer wing at our church now for almost six months. And after spending some time with it, setting it up, using it week in, week out, teaching our volunteers how to use it and operate the board, I wanted to just make a video talking about what I like and what I don't like about this board from my perspective, because there's a lot of other videos out there with professional audio engineers talking about what they like and what they don't like. But I wanted to give you kind of my perspective. You know, I wouldn't really consider myself a professional audio engineer. If I'm involved in worship at all, I'm usually on the stage playing guitar. So it's not very often that I get to be back here behind a console, but I've spent some time now with the wing uh, at different weeks showing other people how to use it and getting to know the board myself. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this board and our experience upgrading from the X32 to the wing. And to kind of spoil it for you here at the beginning, I really like this board. Most of my personal experience has come from the X32. And so jumping from the X32 to the wing, I've been really happy with it. It's everything great about the X32, but then obviously a lot more uh, packed into this. So hopping into what I like about this board, this is not gonna be like everything, like an exhaustive list, but just things that stood out to me, highlights if you will, of things that I liked about the wing. This first one is a little bit controversial because if you watch some other videos, people will probably say the exact opposite, but I liked how easy it was to set up and configure. I pulled this thing out of the box and it probably was not a smart move, but I looked at no manual. I watched no video. I referenced no article about how to set this up, how to route uh, channels and audio sources and set up outputs and move around and navigate the board. I looked at absolutely nothing. I just pulled it out of the box, plugged it in and started going through the menus and I was able to pick it up in just a few minutes. It made sense to me, the sources, channels, and outputs, uh, separating those three things, that clicked in my head. And uh, I was able to start taking sources and putting them to channels that I wanted them, and then uh, assigning them outputs um, where I wanted those to go. Now, it's not the way that a lot of other boards you know, kind of configure their setup process uh, with sources, channels, and outputs specifically. But for me, going coming in here, not being familiar with this board at all, it was easy to get a handle of, and it was easy to just start, uh, you know, setting up your channel strips and start, uh, you know, getting inputs in there uh, pretty quickly. Like I said, I know that's probably not a very popular opinion, but I thought it made a lot of sense to me. You know, you have your sources, which is everything that's coming into the board and all the various places that they could be coming into the board. And you just go in through and assign and name each of those. And then you have channels where you want your layout to be and how you want those to be ordered. And then your output. So what do you want to be sent to what output and where you want those things to go? And it's easy to go back in there and change things if you ever need to make adjustments. If you uh, patch something new in on the stage, you can easily go in there, find the source, and then just name that and then put it wherever you want on the channel strips and wherever you need it to go on the output. So that was a simple process. I think it's very intuitive and I like the way they handled that here. It's definitely better than the X32. You know, sometimes the X32 felt like a brain teaser trying to figure out the routing. Um, and, uh, you know, eventually you get the hang of it and it gets more intuitive and you figure it out. But uh, this was intuitive for me right out of the gate and I like that. Another thing that I really like about the wing is just how much you can actually customize the layout of this board. Once you name your sources, you can come in and you can assign a, basically a custom layout for your one through 12 banks, your 13 through 24 banks, and your 25 through 36 banks, and so on and so forth. But then you also have uh, these user one presets and user two presets uh, that you can also make customized um, you know, layouts for. So you know, if you have multiple people mixing, you can have uh, custom layouts for each person, and then you don't have to reconfigure anything, but someone can just hop in here and go to their user one or user two and jump right into their preferred layout uh, on this board. And you can just mix and match things too. You can you can put a DCA group right next to a channel uh, or, or a bus mix next to a channel or a bus mix next to a DCA, which is what we've actually done. Because on this um, middle bank here, you know, oftentimes we'll be bouncing back and forth between uh, DCA groups and our bus master. Uh, but instead of just having to toggle back and forth between those, we put our four most used DCA groups on uh, user one. Then on the next four channels, we have our most used mix buses. Just on one uh, bank, we have basically all that we need from this one section, uh, typically. And then if we do need to get in there for the rest of the DCAs, we, we can access it there. And if we need to get to the rest of the bus mixes, uh, then we can obviously jump over there. But for the most part, we can just leave it on this one user one preset and get to everything that we need kind of in this section. Uh, same thing with user one over here. We just have a couple microphones and 
and then uh, the computer and then the main mix. And you can just customize whatever you want. You know, these are just a couple of quick access faders that you probably will need, you know, be nice to have access to. For us, our main mixing happens uh, right here. We have user one, which is basically all of our drums and most of our instruments. And then we jump down to user two and we have all of our vocals and then a few more instruments there and so basically they just jump back and forth between user one and user two we could bank forward because they have that you can toggle through this is still you know you're just banking forward into user one um but my brain for some reason i just want to toggle down i just want to jump down so i just used a combination of user one and user two as just banking up and down basically moving on to the third thing that i really like channel strips this again makes sense to me i love the way that this is laid out first off it's just easy to get back and forth from each thing if you want to hop from the compressor to the eq to the gate it's simple to do that instead of having to find it and hit view on the uh you know on the board somewhere uh like similar to the x32 you just select the channel that you want and all that information is just right here at your fingertips and so you don't have to go move around hit this button to bring the eq up and then come over here hit the compressor uh, button to bring the compressor up it's all right there uh, for that one channel and also too this is a visual representation of the channel processing and the order that it's going through so it's hitting the gain first obviously but then it's going to the gate and then you have your EQ hitting it, and then it goes down to uh, your compressor, and then effects and, uh, you know, insert effects, and then what main outputs you're sending it to, and then what bus sends you're sending it to. It's a good visual representation of that, and it's also just easy to get around from one thing to the next. Another thing that I like, especially compared to the X32, is just the onboard effects that this console has. Uh, it's been a breeze setting up uh, effects on certain channels, and then also on certain mix buses, so that we can route, you know, our vocals and stuff through a vocal reverb mix bus and a vocal delay mix bus and then uh, just the interface of going through selecting the uh, effect that you want and then uh, just you know adjusting the parameters like this uh, on the touch screen and all of these cool delays and compressors and things that you can just kind of mess with and tweak it's just really simple and really easy just to grab an effect throw it on a channel and then just start tweaking with it and this is something that's really efficient for me because I know back when we had the x32 the thought did cross my head of you know what if I set up another computer that's that's running Waves plugins and routing the audio out of the X32 into the computer, running th through Waves, and then you know throwing it back into the X32. And uh, you know with this and the effects that are are here, it's really not worth it for us to do something like that. Um, you know at this point, so uh, these are great uh, and these uh, do more than enough as far as getting the job done for us here. And it's simple; it's just a simple workflow. It's all self-contained, uh, which I like, and uh, they sound good and they work well. All right, so now let's talk about the things I actually don't really care for when it comes to this board. Really my biggest gripe with this board is really just actually some of the physical layout of it. Like this custom control section right here, we use this some, you know, we have, uh, you know, sometimes we'll use the DAW controller, it's connected to uh, Logic Pro uh, back here where we do our virtual sound checks and we record service and things like that here. We'll use the mute groups from time to time and we have a couple presets here. We have uh, the tap tempo uh, for the vocal delay and uh, you know we can bring up the mix for the uh, vocal reverb and the vocal delay there. Uh, as well. But besides that, we're really not using much of this uh, section, at least not to its fullest potential yet. And maybe down the line, I'll start, you know, wanting to put things here as I think of them. And then also this section up here, which I've seen, you know, other people in other videos talk about, they don't really use this section or even this section yet uh, either. I haven't really even touched that. This stuff, I really don't even use at all. So I don't know what else you could put there that would make more sense. I don't know, more channels, honestly, is kind of the only thing that I really want. I wish I wish this was not just 12 here. I wish we could get to like 16 channels is what I would really love on this first bank, but then that would just really make it long, unless you got rid of this and put this, you know, up there or something, I don't know. But uh, 16 channels, if I could have 16 channels on this first bank here, and then the rest of these, uh, faders uh you know still here as well um that's what i would really love uh yeah this stuff up here i really don't use that much everything besides that has been good and really anything besides that you can customize to make it what you want it to be you know what i mean like the channel layout and stuff like that you can just customize it to make it the layout that you want and uh you can put things where you want but yeah i really just don't have much to complain about when it comes to this board it just it works well and it sounds great maybe some of the layout things could be better but 
that's kind of really the only thing that I really wish, uh, you know, this board had. All right, so now that I've talked about what I like and what I don't like, uh, let's kind of switch directions here a little bit. And I want to talk about specifically if you have an X32 or an M32 and you're looking to upgrade to the wing. Obviously, the stage boxes and any other uh, Behringer products uh, work with the wing as well as the X32 and the M32. So as far as upgrading, that's going to be the simplest way to upgrade right there because you don't have to switch out stage boxes and things like that. But as far as when it comes to things like audio, quality that's something that I noticed actually right away so we had the x32 here we were playing stuff back on the computer and then we pulled it off uh, the desk and we threw down the wing we plugged everything up and I played the exact same recording off the computer here and with no EQ no compression no effects just dry signal coming through I thought it sounded better than our EQ compression and everything that we had running on the X32. Now that may have just been we had after you know after so long of using the X32, maybe we just you know our EQ just started to get you know kind of wonky and we just needed to start clean. You know, again, I'm not back here every week, so you know different people are back here different weeks tweaking things and doing things like that. But I thought right out of the gate, just throwing this down, just a clean slate, no EQ, no compression, this thing sounded amazing. And that kind of leads me to one thing that I've really been thinking about you know over the last couple months as I've gotten to know this board. You know, we had the X32 when COVID started. I ended up going the route of sending our audio tracks to uh, Logic Pro and then mixing that in Logic and then sending that out uh, to our live stream. Uh, but if we had the wing when COVID started, I honestly would have just created a dedicated mix bus for our live stream and then mixed that off of an iPad, uh, you know, in another room or something, but just had an iPad controlling that live stream mix because the effects in here uh, are great, good enough that you, you know, you can really get by uh, with a solid live stream mix with the delay and reverb and a little bit of, you know, pitch correction on the vocals. I know it's not the greatest uh, pitch corrector, you know, out there, but still like all of those effects and, and the way this board works and the sound quality coming from it i would have just gone that route and just and just mixed off of an ipad for our live stream you know it would have simplified things a lot out of the gate and then if later we wanted to you know move to a DAW, we could but i think you know i haven't tested it yet but i think you get a really great live stream sound out of this console that's one thing i want to test down the road and kind of compare it you know what can you get out of here for a live stream mix versus uh you know what you can get out of logic pro or ableton and i'm sure there's a lot of people already doing that and they're doing a great job uh, getting a live stream mix out of the wing and I say all that to say this, if you are thinking about upgrading from the X32 and you're looking to move to a wing and uh, you're also still uh, sending a mix bus uh, from the wing to your live stream, then this would be a good solution, I think, for that because of those added effects and things like that and just flexibility with this board. Uh, I think that that workflow uh, really would work well on this console. And so if you don't want to go the, you know, uh, DAW route, then this would be a good option. And if you're interested in kind of seeing the results of that, you know, DAW version, versus Behringer Wing live stream mix. Leave a comment down below and let me know and I'll see if I can make a video about that when I get to uh, testing that out and seeing what those results are. Anyway, so I think that's gonna wrap things up for me here. Hope you enjoyed this video, a little bit different. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, comments, anything you wanna add to the conversation here or any questions you have specifically about the Behringer Wing, uh, feel free, let me know. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, another thing I just kind of forgot about, but you want to talk about flexibility with this thing. Uh, you know, this is the talkback mic that we use to talk, to communicate to the band. And uh, without having to change where I'm plugging that mic in or anything like that, I'm just literally just routed it to the computer here. And I'm recording the audio for this video just through that exact same channel. So, you know, with just a couple buttons, I could just hit on output. Okay, send it to uh, this this uh, Mac mini and send it to uh, logic here. And I was able to do that and boom, just like that. So, you know, just another example about the customization aspect of this thing. Um, you know, it's pretty cool.